Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Production. Today, we are talking about snares, snare lug counts, and whether or not there's such a thing as a good or a bad number of lugs. First things first, there isn't. The number of lugs is not about good or bad. It's not about cheap or expensive. It's not about anything that you might have thought it was about. The truth is, they are good for different things, and we're going to show you every bit of it. We'd really like to mention up front, too, a special thanks to Asba Drums for letting us use this drum for this episode. This is not a sponsored episode, but it is allowing us to do this demonstration because of its unique tuning and lug count adjusting possibilities. If you haven't seen the snare spotlight video that is dedicated to this drum in particular, jump over and check that out because it is, <laughs> it's a lot. Now it is true that in the past, and in some cases now, student model or lower quality drums would have less hardware on them as a cost saving measure. But that doesn't mean that less lugs is actually lower quality. It actually affords us some opportunities in specific tuning ranges that something like a 10 lug is gonna start to struggle with. Now, once upon a time, back in season one, we did the best we could in terms of a comparison for this, but because we were using drums that weren't exactly the same construction or the exact same snare wires, there were a lot of other variables involved. Because of this instrument in particular, we were afforded the option of changing out the lugs while leaving every single other variable untouched, giving us a direct comparison. Now, speaking of comparisons, we're gonna start off with a medium tuning moving through 10 lugs to eight lugs and finally to six so we can start to get a sense of what we're dealing with here. Now that we've heard the drum by itself, let's insert it into a groove, again moving from 10 lugs to 8 and then finally to 6. Now what we're hearing here is a result of losing nodes of pressure on each of the heads. We're going from 10 down to eight and to six. And as that happens, we have to have a lot more tension on each node to achieve the same pitch on each head. What that means for us is that the whole behavior of the drum and particularly in the sustain and the overtone starts to act differently. You can hear quite clearly that none of these is necessarily better or worse than either of the others. They are just different and the character in these is what we're here to discuss today. If the differences between each of these examples is tricky for you to hear, we still advise, as we often do, to use headphones when you listen to this, quality ones if possible, because some of these things are subtle. And if even then they're all really kind of just sounding like a drum to you, this is an opportunity to start to dig into some ear training and really look and listen as hard as you can for what is changing. Maybe it's not the attack, maybe it's not the overtones, maybe it's in the wires. Take a second, really just listen as hard as you can. Now, we recently did an episode about 
overtones, about frequency ranges, about how each drum occupies a different span of the frequencies that are available to a drum set. And in the case of this lug count conundrum, each of these loves a certain part of the frequency spectrum. And what we want to talk about now is why you might choose a six lug drum over a 10 lug or an eight lug drum for a certain playing or recording situation. The first thing we want to do here is demonstrate what happens when we use identical tuning with six lugs versus 10 lugs in the low register. Now the really interesting thing about an experiment like this is that for instance with the batter head, the 10 lug tuning has much less tension per lug than we have at the six lug scenario. And that means that for one thing, the six lug is gonna have a lot less likelihood of having the rods back out because there's a whole lot more tension on each one. And then on the flip side, there's a possibility of starting to have rattles and noise and all sorts of stuff happen with the 10 because we're going for such a low tuning. What this means for us also is that the 10 is got such a small amount of tension per lug that we are starting to have a choking situation happen here because there's not enough pressure at each location to get really good interaction between the head and the drum itself. That woody, fat, boomy, warm, <laughs> adjective-laden quality that the six lug has at this tuning is definitely what I want to hear when I'm going for a low tuning. So this means to me that if I know I need to get down into that super gut bucket area, going to an eight or even a six lug setup is definitely where I want to start. Alright, now we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum. We're going to take the 10 lug setup, crank it real high, and see how the 6 lug compares at that pitch. Now this tuning is super fun, uh, frankly, with both setups, but there is a sort of a loss that starts to happen when you take a six lug drum and tune it this high. The 10 is behaving exactly like we expected. It doesn't even really feel like it's under that much tension, you know, at the key when you're doing it. But when we move to the six, it felt like we were tuning it as tight as it could possibly go to the point where it was difficult to turn just to get it to the same pitches. Now at this tension, we're starting to experience a similar frustration that we did with the previous demo, which is that 
The six lug is choking out both audibly and physically when I hit it. It doesn't feel great to hit. And at this tension, the 10 feels great. It feels like it's made to do it. So if I know I'm doing a ska session or if I know I want to really, really, really cut, then a 10 lug drum makes sense because we have all of these locations to give us tension and balance it out and get the most out of that shell. The net result of all of this is that we're learning that there are ranges of tuning that are really kind of optimized for certain lug counts. Less lugs, lower tuning. More lugs, higher tuning. But what we also know is that if we're trying to maybe recreate a sound from an old record that's a little bit choky and in the high range, maybe we want a six lug and crank it up. You know, some James Brown records, the snare sounds a little choky and it's a beautiful sound. It's not a wrong sound at all. And then on the other hand, you know, if you want to go low with an eight lug, it is going to sound a little different than going low with a six lug. And it's worth experimenting because every one of these sounds has a place. They all are good sounds. They all sound like drums. But starting with knowing a sort of ballpark of like where you would put a six lug or where you'd put a 10 lug, it takes us in the right direction. And then we can deviate from that however much we want. Now this brings us back to where we started, which is that for our money here, an eight lug drum is the most versatile choice. We're both big believers in the Acrolyte and the only custom drum I ever had made, I had it be eight lugs. Um, we made a video about it, the Keplinger snare. At the end of the day, if you're a person like, like we are, where you don't wanna take a lot of excessive gear with you wherever you go and you want versatility and also something that's gonna hit really specific marks for you that you're familiar with, eight lugs might be the way to go. Probably the most important takeaway that we want to give to you today is that when you look at a drum and you see everything about it, the finish, the shell material, the type of hoops, wires, all of that stuff, don't forget that the number of lugs is a huge factor in the way that that drum is going to behave. And for any drum that isn't this drum, you're going to have that number of lugs for that drum. That's how many is going to be forever and ever. So knowing what you're getting into in terms of what you want that drum to do Never ever discount the lug count. And don't think of six as worse than 10. It's just different. And it's gonna do things that a 10 won't do in the same way that a 10 won't do everything that a six will do. What we're really hoping is that this gives you some direction in not just buying new drums, but also getting into what the drums you have already want to do, or even single drum if you have one snare drum. Count the lugs, think about that in terms of where it lives in the spectrum. Every drum does a lot of things, but there's no sense in not figuring out what the drum you have wants to do the best. And that about wraps it up for today. Thanks so much to Asva Drums for allowing us to use this drum to demonstrate this today. It would have been impossible to do this without it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and bop over to the Patreon. The link is below. It's a great way to help us continue to make these videos, grow the channel, and give you all of this content that we have on the regular channel and also on the Patreon. Finally, if you have feelings on lug counts and how you got to those feelings, we would love to know that in the comments because there's a lot of opportunity to think about things like this when we're choosing sounds and we would love to know how you got to yours. Yeah.